My name is Dominique Jando, and maybe you will not notice, but I'm not American. <laughs> I'm French. Uh, don't worry, I went into rehab. Uh, I'm fine now. I was a clown too, and I was I went into rehab for that too. Uh, so everything will be fine. Uh, Dick told you one or two things uh, about me, so now you know everything. I can leave, but uh, I, I will speak a little bit. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the circus in Europe and this famous circus Medrano, where I was uh, lucky to work. Uh, and where Picasso and many others did their work uh, about the circus. And uh, that relates to a totally different approach of what the circus is. Uh, in America, you have this image of the circus with a big tent and uh, the city of, uh, of canvas coming in the morning in a, in a city, putting all those tents on doing the show and throwing hoopla, candy uh, floss and uh, uh, hot dogs and uh, everything has disappeared the day after and that was circus day. Uh, in Europe and in America actually before the Civil War, but in Europe it's, the tradition is a little bit different, not that we don't have circus dance, we have, but the tradition, the, the big tradition of the circus is uh, located in circus buildings or urban services. Uh, and that changed completely uh, the vision you can have of the circus because uh, the circus, the touring circus, the tenting circus, uh, created this image of circus people as a, uh, as a bunch of gypsies who just came into your locality and uh, started uh, stealing chicken and your daughters and things like that and disappeared after that and they didn't belong and the urban circus creates a totally different uh, tradition because it belongs to the city it's like a theater it's a, just another theater in Paris uh, where I was born uh, we had I was not there yet but before the war uh, we had up to four circus buildings performing together. When I was young and beautiful, which is not so long ago, uh, uh, when I was a teenager, until 63 when, when Circus Medrano was closed, uh, we had two circuses and they changed their program every month, both of them. So I was a little bit sick in my head and uh, things like that. I used to go to the circus every week. You were not obliged to. That. But uh, people used to go to the circus quite often and as a result they were quite knowledgeable in what they were seeing. They were able to make the difference between a good act and a bad act, uh, uh, this kind of trapeze act and that kind of trapeze act. It's not as they often say, it's always the same thing. It's always the same thing if you go to the opera uh, once every three years and it, an opera will look like another opera. If you go on a regular basis, you will realize that all operas are not the same. Same for ballet, same for every performing art. And there is this famous circus Medrano, which people who are uh, interested in, uh, in art, in painting, and they have seen this name appearing with another name, which is Cirque Fernando, actually the same circus. And why did Renoir, Degas, Toulouse-Lautrec, Picasso, Léger, Rouault, and a lot of other painters which are uh, less known than that, but we have done also painting in this service. Why is it? Uh, why not another service? As I told you, there were four circuses in Paris at that some time. Uh, it's, uh, it's for a very simple and a little bit strange. One part of the reason is simple, the other is a little bit surprising. Uh, first, uh, Cirque Medrano was located at the foot of Montmartre, of the Colline Montmartre where a lot of painters in the 19th century used to live. After that, in the 20th, they moved to Montparnasse, but before they were in Montmartre. So it was a neighborhood circus in a way. And painters like circus, like they like ballet, they like everything in which the human body can be seen, because it's a good place to sketch and, and uh, uh, do your work, your homework as a, as a painter, as an artist. So it was a good place where to go and make some 
uh, drawings in the morning during the rehearsal or during uh, the performance. And somehow, when this circus came to Montmartre, it was in uh, 1874, uh, it was built there without any permit, which is quite interesting. Uh, and uh, it was uh, built by uh, an equestrian, because great circus families are families of equestrians, generally, who was called Fernand Baer, known as Fernando, and it was Circus Fernando. And somehow, Fernand Baer was a good horse trainer, the manager of the business was his wife, and uh, his wife had a soft spot for artists. And when painters came and said, could we come? We, of course, they didn't have any money or anything. They were living at the Bateau Lavoir, and uh, they, they, you know, Picasso, that, I, I always suspected that Picasso had his blue period because he couldn't buy tubes of red. So, uh, <laughs> It was really uh, that. Uh, so those guys came to the circus and uh, asked the permission to, to make some sketch uh, in the morning during rehearsals and uh, also come to the show. And somehow Mrs. Fernando created this thing that if you were a painter, you had free tickets for the circus whenever you wanted. So everybody went there. Uh, Degas, Renoir, uh, Lautrec, of course, were there all the time. All the series, I heard that Lautrec did some thing at the Nouveau Cirque, which was another uh, circus building, which was uh, Rue saint honore in Paris. Uh, but actually, he did very little at the Nouveau Cirque. It was not Lautrec kind of circus. It was a very, very elegant and snobbish circus, the Nouveau Cirque. Medrano was you know, in Montmartre, it was more bohemian in style, and uh, Lautrec did all his series in the circus, actually at, at Fernando, at Circus Fernando. And when uh, Jeromino Medrano, who was a clown, bought back uh, Medrano uh, after it went uh, bankrupt, at the, the turn of the century, he just kept the tradition alive of uh, artists who had free tickets at, uh, at Circus Medrano. And the tradition continued, and there were Picasso.